And Pat Crowley and I are joined by Roger Brucker, who is the author of a brand new historical novel called Grand, Gloomy, and Peculiar. The voice of this book, the protagonist, the person who tells the story is actually a woman a woman, the wife of Stephen Bishop. And I'm wondering how, as a, as a gentleman who has been a scholar and a, an author for so many years, would put his brain into the brain of a woman, a slave woman, and be able to relate and, and tell her story through her eyes. This uh, has been a puzzle for a lot of people, including me. <laughs> uh, for about 10 years, I couldn't tell the story because I didn't know how to do it. And then one of my students in a speleology class had written a book about a Native American woman bow hunter. Mm -hmm. It's a mystery book that, in which she solves some murders. And I said, how in the world did you have the audacity to write this from a woman's point of view and do it convincingly? He said, well, a woman author told me how to do it. He said, you just do the best you can, but show it to a lot of smart women who don't know you very well. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I suddenly had a first person who could tell this story. Mm -hmm. Someone and who loves Stephen Bishop the best yes. and the most with that kind of love and, um, and spirit. And so, of course, it would make it even more compelling. That's right. And we do know some facts about her, that uh, they uh, were married, that uh, she became the manager of the Mammoth Cave Hotel dining room. <laughs> uh, in other words, she had some smarts. So yeah. given those facts uh, and given the fact that they were married for quite a while and had a son named Tom, Thomas, uh, we begin to go from there. And cool. uh, in writing historical fiction, the problem is you have to uh, consider the uh, river of narration uh, and you have to run that narration around the facts, which are the rocks in the river. You don't want to run the narration through the rocks. So there are no violations of known facts in there. But beyond the main storyline, which I knew pretty well, there were always problems. For example, in one place, somebody strikes a match. And, and the question is, were there matches then? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. well, I, you write the Diamond Match Company. Yeah. And they say, <laughs> we don't know. Why don't you uh, talk to your <laughs> county historical society? Yeah, really? And uh, so uh, I then learned later that the white sulfur matches were invented in London. Uh, about 10 years before, and those were widely used in the United States. But the problem with a white sulfur match is if you breathe the smoke, mm. it's going to be lethal. Oh. So all of this research going on over several months and days so. ends up as one line in the book. <laughs> Here, I'll light your... Yeah. Uh, here, get a piece of flint out for heaven's sake. Yeah. So it's not I'll, I'll light your uh, lamp here, but don't breathe the smoke. It'll kill you. Oh, my goodness. So one little blurb takes a lot of research in that. But, of course, uh, important because lights in the caves. I mean, um, we just saw a photograph of you with, with a, a light hat on. In the Mam Mammoth Caves for the public tours, can you go in the parks where they're completely dark? It's been years since I've been down there. Generally, one of the visitor experiences that they put on is to turn out the lights and have people yeah. experience this yeah, total darkness that. Yeah. for a few seconds. Actually, for some people, that seems a long time. But in total darkness, of course, you can't see the hand in front of your face or anything else. And, but uh, Mammoth Cave is a visitor uh, site that people from this part of the country can go see. It's a good uh, trip. It's about three hours from uh, uh, northern Kentucky and uh, southern Ohio. It's a wonderful visit this time of the year because there are few crowds. The mm. leaves are now turning. Yeah. And, uh, I, I would urge people to go see it. Why was it important for you to tell his story, Stephen Bishop's story? Well, because Stephen Bishop represents one of the first systematic cave explorers in the United States. The fact that he is an African American uh, is really incidental to the story, except that he was certainly embedded in, in a slave system, mm -hmm. which uh, we know a lot about from reading. But most of what we read has to do with plantation life. And we don't really read a lot about antebellum Kentucky and slavery in that set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Roughly 10% of the slaves at that time were employed on <laughs> not employed, but were on plantations where they suffered all kinds of cruelty and abuse and were familiar with that. 
Slaves in Kentucky tended to be uh, domestic servants, uh, craftspeople, uh, in food service. They, they did a lot of things. Some were farmhands, to be sure. But it was a, a, a little different culture, and, and that hasn't been told. So there was a chance to tell that. And he even created so many maps that have just been invaluable, you know, because of his expertise, and, and he, he had the smarts, too. He did have the smarts. He was a very intelligent person, a fast learner. While he, he was taught the rudiments of reading, he mostly taught himself, and he taught Charlotte Bishop, who tells the story, mm -hmm. how to read. Some people have said, well, gee, wasn't it against the law to teach slaves to read? Well, it was not in Kentucky. And anybody who valued a slave and you had to pay enough money to get yeah. one would want the slave to be able to read. Why? More valuable. Well, this is a, an incredible story, one that I'm sure you're going to want to read. Uh, it is the story of Stephen Bishop at Mammoth Cave called Grand, Gloomy, and Peculiar. And you can meet the author, Roger Brucker, uh, Saturday, October the 17th from 10 until 4. He'll be at the Duke Energy Convention Center as a part of a, a big convention of authors there. And your website is also a lovely place to find out more information, robertbrucker.com. Such an honor to meet you, sir. Yep.